Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Welcome, fellow medical students, in the pathology lectures to start with the pathology of respiratory system. Because of the structural complexity of the pulmonary tissue, it is so important to classify them or to categorize the diseases that involve the lung into the following categories those which are affecting the airways and those which are affecting interstitial and those which involve the pulmonary vasculature in order to simplify its study. To start with uh, diseases that involve the airways, first, atelectasis. This means loss of lung volume, which caused by inadequate expansion of air spaces which lead to shunting of inadequately oxygenated blood from the pulmonary arteries into veins, thus giving rise to hypoxia. So from the definition, loss of the pulmonary volume means there is a marked reduction or quickly reduction uh, of the pulmonary uh, uh, volume. As you know, most of the pulmonary volume uh, consists of uh, air spaces which filled by air. In the absence of air, the air spaces will get collapsation. So, according to the cause of uh, uh, collapsation of these air spaces, according to the cause of collapsation of these air spaces, we can classify the atelectasis also into three types. Let's go to the diagram. The first is known as resorption atelectasis, and this results from obstruction of the air. Obstruction of the air. Okay? And hence, the site of obstruction will impair the air movement or the air flow into the distal portion uh, uh, of the uh, pulmonary tissue. Hence, there will be a collapsation of the pulmonary tissue distal to the site of obstruction, distal to the site of obstruction, particularly after gradual resorption of the air which is entrapped previously uh, in this site. This is known as resorption atelectasis. And the causes of obstruction uh, of the bronchi and the bronchi uh, is so many. So, the causes of airway obstruction are so many. Sometimes because uh, of uh, foreign body find its way inside the airways, or sometimes because of the obstructive airway diseases, uh, which include a massive mucus production with formation of mucus plugs. Uh, that uh, cause the obstruction or sometimes uh, due to tumors of the airways. The second type is known as the compression atelectasis which result from extra pulmonary cause. Extra pulmonary cause. For example, accumulation or occupation of the pleural space by fluid or by blood that cause a compression of the pulmonary tissue and hence this compression uh, reduces the expansive capacity of the lung and hence, hence to prevent the air flow uh, uh, from reach to this site. And sometimes, uh, uh, or the third form, it is known as the contraction of the leptosis. This result mostly or associate mostly with uh, the interstitial pulmonary diseases uh, which characterized by presence of uh, fibrosis, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis for example, uh, chronic inflammatory diseases that involve the pulmonary tissue with the resultant fibrosis uh, and the fibrosis as we said uh, previously uh, it is of low elasticity than the pulmonary tissue and hence reducing the expansive capacity of the lung with the result in the shrinkage of the pulmonary tissue uh, and atelectasis. So this type is known as the contraction atelectasis. And here is the 
uh, types of the atelectasis and its causes. Look at the causes of resorption atelectasis due to airway obstruction, by bronchial asthma, bronchial cases, uh, chronic bronchitis, tumors, or formed by the insult. Obstructive versus restrictive pulmonary diseases. Uh, Kinda ahna mostly in obstructive pulmonary diseases involving the airways, while the restrictive pulmonary diseases mostly involving the interstitial, pulmonary interstitial. So, what is the differences between them? Diffuse pulmonary diseases can be classified into two categories. Obstructive airway diseases, okay, this characterized by limitation of the air, uh, air flow. Of course, uh, once there is an obstruction of the airways, there is an impairment or limitation of the air flow. The fourth vital capacity is either normal or slightly decreased. Why? Because the uh, inspiratory, uh, uh, inspiration of the air is an active process. The inspiration of the air is an uh, active process. Hence, hence, the air will introduce to the pulmonary tissue by force, overcoming the uh, uh, airway narrowing. Uh, uh, yes. Means the inspiration is an active process, therefore, inspiration by force can overcome the narrowing of the airways. Therefore, the uh, forced vital capacity will be normal or slightly decreased. While the expiration process is a passive process, depends on the recoiling uh, mechanism of the pulmonary tissue. Uh, hence, it is a passive process. Therefore, uh, the impairment of the uh, air outflow will be difficult. Hence, hence uh, the expiratory flow rate is significantly decreased significantly decreased the ratio of uh, forced expiratory volume to force vital capacity is characteristically decreased while in restrictive diseases it is characterized by reduced expansion expansion of the uh, of the pulmonary parenchyma in this form Full vital capacity is reduced and the expiratory flow rate is normal. Why? Because there is a reduction, a reduction in the expansile capacity of the lung. Why? Because, uh, as we said previously, uh, the restrictive diseases result from interstitial uh, lesions, which is mostly associated with uh, uh, fibrosis. Uh, pulmonary interstitial fibrosis and the fibrosis cause uh, less elasticity of the pulmonary tissue and hence uh, necessitate its shrinkage. So uh, even if the uh, inspiratory process or inspiration process is active process but it can't overcome the uh, rigidity of the lung or reducing of its uh, expansion or reducing of its expansile capacity while the expiratory flow rate is normal ليش لانه انت الكميه اللي تاخذها من الهواء بالانسبيريشن هي نفسها اللي راح تطرحها او تعادلها تمام لانه الايرويز يعني there is no problem in the airways the the problem in the expansile capacity of the lung hence the ratio of force expiratory volume to force vital capacity is nearly normal. Example of restrictive diseases. The acute form is, is the acute respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, while the chronic restrictive diseases including pneumoconiosis, and this will be enrolled later, interstitial fibrosis of unknown etiology and sarcoidosis, look at all these causes and uh, mainly associate with marked fibrosis of uh, the interstitial pulmonary tissue. Starting with the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, 
These include emphysema, chronic bronchitis, asthma, and bronchic tests. Emphysema is characterized by abnormal and permanent. Abnormal and permanent enlargement of the air spaces. This to the terminal bronchioles. يعني شنو؟ يعني من respiratory bronchioles وشيريدك. إحنا شعدنا عدنا بالنهاية terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct and alveolar sacs where the gas exchange occur in the sides. Okay. زين. من respiratory bronchioles إلى النهاية مثل ال alveolar sacs هذا كله نسميه الأسنس تمام هذا كله نسميه الأسنس لذلك إحنا نحكي عن الأسنس لازم تعرف إحنا قاعد نحكي من level of the respiratory bronchioles إلى ال alveolar sacs فديستال تو ذا terminal bronchioles يعني معناها قديم من ال respiratory bronchioles إلى ال alveolar duct إلى ال alveolar sacs Accompanied by destruction of their walls, sir, to hold them with a hand, without significant fibrosis, without significant fibrosis. Then, types of emphysema, according to the anatomic distribution of the emphysema, can be classified into three categories. The first is known as the central asthma or central alveolar emphysema. This affecting the central or proximal part of the asthma. Okay, the proximal part. معناها باتجاه الترمينال برونكيول معناتها عندنا destruction or involving the respiratory bronchioles but not the alveolar لا الالفيلار دكت ولا الالفيلار ساكس the lesions are more common and severe in the upper lobes particularly the apical segment mostly uh, this associated with cigarette smoking particularly in the absence of congenital alpha 1 antitrypsin Deficiency. قصة السموكينج عفوا السموكينج with the alpha 1 antitrypsin احنا شنو الرول of alpha 1 antitrypsin in the maintenance of the alveolar walls integrity عندنا ما يسمى بالبروتيز انتي بروتيز ميكانيزم or maintenance of protease and anti protease equilibrium The proteases, uh, one of them is the elastase. The elastase can increase this produced by the inflammatory cells, one of the inflammatory cell enzymes. Elastase causes increased rigidity of the alveolar uh, septa. While alpha-1 antitrypsin is an anti-protease or anti-elastase, have an anti-elastase mechanism, means when it suppresses the elastase or deletes its effect, means this will uh, uh, cause uh, increased elasticity of the alveolar septa. So the balance between them maintain maintain the elasticity of the alveolar wall. يعني لا خليها كلش رجل ولا خلي بسبب زيادة الإلاستيس ولا تصير كلش إلاستيك بحيث ما لها حدود بالإكسبانشن مالتها Uh, بسبب زيادة الالفا 1 انتي تريبسين. السموكينج شو يسوي؟ ما دام اكو سموكينج اذا وي هاف ا بالمونري اوكيبيشن. ليش؟ باي انفلاماتري اكزيدنت. ليش؟ لانه قاعد نسوي احنا الريتيشن، كونتينيوس الريتيشن اوف ذا ايرويدز وبعد وبسبب الفورد ماتيريالز ويش كم وذ سموك لايك ذا كاربونيك ماتيريال اند سو اون. This will necessitate the inflammatory process. Increase inflammation means increase elastase means increase rigidity of the alveolar wall. And the presence of alpha-1 antitrypsin will start to reduce, partially reduce, the effect of increase in the level of elastase. And hence, it will result in the centri asinar emphysema. يعني, يعني احنا في حالة عدم وجود الكونجينيتال Uh, defect or uh, congenital deficiency in the alpha-1 antitrypsin. If we have deficiency, we will have a level of alpha-1 antitrypsin, but it will not be able to increase the amount of elastase. Therefore, the level of elastase will be reduced by the level of 
الفاون انتي تريبسين انهيز ذير سبيراتري اور ذي سنتري اسينر انفزي ما كان اكر النوع الاخر اللي هو البان اسينر اور البان لوبيلر انفزي ما من اسمه بان معناته كل الاسينس انفولف باي ذيس اوكي يعني انفولف باي ذيس تشينج فمن الريسبيراتري برونكيول الى التيرمينال برونكيول الى الالفيلاي عفوا الى التيرمينال الى 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 الالفيلار داكت الى الالفيلار ساكس كلها انفولف باي ذي انفزيتين باس اكسبانشن هذا شو وقت يصير؟ يصير في حاله الالفا 1 انتي تريبسين ديفيشنسي بارتيكولرلي يعني في السوبر امبوزد باي سموكينج اذا كان البيشنت هو اصلا عنده هيريديتري الفا 1 انتي تريبسين ديفيشنسي اللي هو معادل الى الايفكت اوف الاستيز الان راح تماما ما عندنا فما عندنا احد يسوي لنا يعني ما عندنا فد انزيم يسوي فلكسيبلتي اوف ذا الفيلر سبتا ونجي احنا نسوي سوبر امبوزيشن فور ذا الاستيز برودكشن باي ذا سموكينج سو راح يخلي الالفيلر سبتا كلش رجل وكلش لايبل فور ديستركشن اكو نوع اخر اللي هو نوع سي نسميه ديستال اسنا وهذا يصير يعني فور انون كوزز اللي هي بس الالفيلر ساكس هي تكون بي انفولد واكو نوع نسميه الريجولر انفزيما، الريجولر انفزيما يعني هذا راح نلقاهم كلهم كود بي السنتري اسينر، كود بي البان اسينر، كود بي الديستال اسينر في نفس المكان وهذا يعني ايضا يكون اوف انون كوز هذه هي الانواع مالتهم هذا هذا هو النورمال وان ريسبيراتوري برونكيول اند هير از ذا الفيلر داك And here is the alveolar sacs. في حالة السنتري أسنا راح يصير عندنا involvement of the respiratory bronchial by expansion. وتبقى عندنا alveolar duct and sacs normal while in the pan أسنا emphysem. كلها راح يصير بها involvement. يعني الأسنا كل يصير بها involvement from the level of the respiratory bronchial to the alveolar sacs. نتوقف عند هذا المقطع ونكمل في مقطع آخر.